Hello and welcome back to another Meals of the Week video. So this is the first one of this year. Sounds really strange saying that. So generally I just take you through the kind of things we eat as a family of five, including three teenage boys that eat a lot, so I cook a lot. Over the course of roughly a week, sometimes it's a couple of weeks rolled into one. There's something actually quite exciting happening in this video that I didn't know was going to happen. That sunshine today is amazing. It is absolutely freezing outside, but the sun just coming up through the trees is like... Just want to bask with it on my face. <laughs> I can't see now. So a few videos ago, I did a review on the Kasori 5.7 liter nine in one pressure cooker. This video isn't sponsored by Kasori, but if you haven't seen that one, I highly recommend you go and check it out. I absolutely love the appliance; it's brilliant, and I do rave about it a lot in that video. But Kasori reached out to me and said, "Would I like to give away that exact model?" to one of my subscribers. Nothing to do with the sponsorship, nothing to do with that video. Just if any one of you guys would like to win one of those, then they're happy to post it out. So stick around to the end of this video and I'll tell you exactly how you can do it. It's such a kind gesture, it's not gonna cost you anything. So make sure you watch this video first and if you haven't seen that one, go and watch that one and stick around to the end, I'll tell you how you can win it. But first of all, let's go and see some of the things we've been eating in the new year. So I'm just starting dinner and I'm gonna make a pork and smoked pancetta lasagna. So I've got some lean pork mince, I'm using two because I want to make quite a big one. Just chopped up a red onion and then I've got some smoked cooking pancetta. So I'm going to fry off the pancetta and the onions and the pork. So I'm actually cheating, I'm going to use the jar sauces, but I'm going to add some tomato puree and some fresh garlic to this, or actually frozen garlic to this as well. Um, and a beef stock pot I think. And then for the sauce, instead of making up a cheese sauce, I'm gonna make, well I'm gonna make a cheese sauce, but I'm gonna do it how I usually do my macaroni cheese. So I'm using tin chicken soup, and trust me it works. Some creme fraiche, some mustard, and loads of grated cheese. So that way you don't have to worry about butter and flour, making a roux and all that kind of thing. So I've never made it this way for a lasagna before, but it comes out really well with the mac and cheese. So I'll show you as I go. So for my cheese sauce, like I said, I've emptied two tins of chicken soup in here, about a teaspoon of mustard, some salt and pepper. I've used about half of this like 50% fat free like creme fraiche. And then I'm also gonna add in some cheese. So I've just grated some cheddar and also some smoked cheese that we've got left from Christmas. That's gonna go in as well. And then I'm just gonna whisk it together. I'm just gonna let it warm up, like whisk it together. Um, and then that's going to be my cheese sauce and yeah I've never done it like this like I said for a lasagna but it works really really well it's gonna, I'm going to make a mess works really well for macaroni cheese so Our lasagna is in the oven, it smells so good. And I'm serving it with these Tesco Finest Red Leicester Extra Mature Cheddar and Red Onion Mini Flatbreads. I bought two packs of these, so they're actually massive. So I'm just gonna do the two between, well there's four of us in, but then I might save a little bit for the other one. I'm just gonna cut them up basically. Oh, you've got good layers. Look at him. Look at that. So it doesn't look as good as it looked in the pan on the plate in the bowl. Um, it it smells up really good, and yeah, <laughs> there's no way to make it look pretty now it's out, but. Those layers were something else. We tried to get a layer shot for you. There we go, smoked pancetta and pork lasagna with, I don't know, some kind of onion in cheese <laughs> bread. So for dinner tonight, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna have cornflakes and crisps. No, for tonight's dinner, I'm gonna make, not really a katsu chicken curry, but I'm gonna coat some chicken breasts. I'm gonna serve them with, on some rice with a curry sauce over them. So kind of like a katsu curry, but not the same ingredients. The idea was to use these spicy like hula hoop crisp things, and crush those up and coat the chicken in those, but somebody's been, been in them and there's only like that much left. So rather than run to the shops, I have got some cornflakes and some tikka curry powder. So I'm gonna crush these, crush some cornflakes, add some tikka curry powder, and then I'm gonna use my um, chicken breast, dip them in some egg, 
coat the chicken. I'll probably pop that in the air fryer maybe. Um, cook some rice, make up some goldfish Chinese curry sauce, cook some tender den broccoli and then put it all together. So not really a katsu curry but it's going to be like flavoured breaded chicken on rice with curry sauce. So I've popped it on a tray. I'm going to do it in the oven because the air fryer will not fit all of this in. So I've got five chicken breasts and then the rest I chopped up and put on skewers because I wasn't that impressed with the quality of the Tesco chicken breast this time. Uh, there was a lot of like sinewy bits and a lot of sort of kind of like gristly bony bits. So I chopped all those off and then threaded what was left after I'd cornflaked them um, onto some skewers. So we've got tandoori seasoning, some of those crisps and some cornflakes that's the word so these are going to go in the oven and then I've just got to boil some rice do some microwave broccoli and make up my curry sauce so here we are served up we've got our chicken which has come out really nice and crispy and then the curry sauce I just use this Chinese curry sauce the goldfish brown one get that in Tesco's or Sainsbury's some boiled rice and then I've just topped it with some tender stem broccoli which I've done in the oven and some toasted black sesame seeds So I'm just making some dinner for tonight and I'm at that really weird phase where I need to do a full proper restock shop but I haven't. So this is what we're working with. I'm currently boiling some pasta in there, two different shapes because that's what I've got. So I've got two tins of tuna out of the cupboard and a pepper that needs using starting to go a bit wrinkly. I've got like a third of a pot of creme fraiche from the other day. Um, probably less than half a thing of salmon Philadelphia probably the same of light Philadelphia um, I've got some tomato puree and some fajita seasoning <laughs> so what I'm gonna do basically I'm gonna use all this to make a sauce so I'm gonna add the tuna to the pasta and the chopped pepper um, mix it in like while the pasta is still hot I'll mix in the two Philadelphia's the creme fraiche I'm gonna chuck the fajita seasoning in and probably a tablespoon of tomato puree cover it in cheese pop it in the oven they'll either eat it or they won't if they're hungry they'll eat it or they'll go and find themselves something else this is what i've got and i'm sick of keep going shopping and buying more food when all these little bits end up floating around and getting wasted so that's what i'm doing i will show you it when i've mixed all this through so here we are with everything added apart from the tuna i thought i'd mix it all through first so it kind of like melts and then add the tuna um save a little bit of the tuna liquid so that the pasta doesn't go too solid when i'm cooking and yeah, I think I've got, I know I've got cheddar, I've got blue cheese, so that's not going anywhere near it because it, it's just going to be one flavour too many. I think I need to rein it in now. Um, but yeah, Mexican tuna pasta bake. We'll see, I'll probably come up with a brand new recipe here. Okay, so I've mixed it all in. It's looking a very different colour on camera <laughs> than it is um, in person. So I'm just going to pop the oven on. I'm probably going to give it around 25, 30 minutes on around 200 degrees fill it with, not fill it, top it with loads and loads of cheddar. I have just tasted it though, really, really good. It is literally like a creamy Mexican tuna pasta. Um, yeah, and I've used up all my bits and pieces. So I will show you it when it comes out of the oven. Hopefully it will look a little bit more appetizing. I actually forgot to film it before I started to dish up, but here we are with the cheese on top. It's actually turned out really, really well. It's again, it's one of those things I always say that I've thrown together, but I'll never be able to make it again. So yeah, this is what is for dinner tonight. We've got some salad on the side and some part bait rolls if anyone wants them, but I really don't think we're gonna need those as well. Creamy tuna fajita pasta. So tonight's dinner was just a simple marinated chicken thigh and a flatbread and halloumi salad. Some of us had flatbread, some of us just had the salad. Haven't had halloumi in a really, really long time and we used to eat it like every single Friday pretty much as one of our Friday night dinners. Of course, we covered everything in loads and loads of coriander and chili flakes, some crispy onions, and yeah, this is one of my absolute favorite dinners, salad or soup, and I'm always happy. So we are having breakfast for dinner tonight, and we went to one of our local farm shops. Um, is that what it says what it's called on there, doesn't it? Yeah, Alga Lodge, is that what it's called? Yeah, I think it's, right. it's called that, but it, obviously it is, because that's yeah. what it says on the ticket. Basically, um, the butcher was telling us that this guy used to be, a, was it an ex-marine? Oh yeah. XRAF and he left and bought a farm and he bought pigs specifically to make black pudding 
And he's won loads and loads of awards. Um, and he's the only person in the country. There's two, or, that are two in the country that make it this traditional way, and he's one of them. Yeah. So, so I don't know what this traditional way is because it doesn't actually say anything on it. No. But the guy was saying, you're in for a treat, you'll never have tasted black pudding like it. I'm not a huge fan, but Steve likes it and Bailey and Jake. Um, I might try a little bit. Nice but yeah, try a bit as well, yeah you? you might try a little bit as well. Yeah. But yeah, we're going to have like a, a brinner, <laughs> like breakfast for dinner. But I just thought we'll see. And I will let you know. I will pop it up on screen or whatever we think of this black pudding. And let me know if you're a fan or not. Because I know it's either like a love it or hate it thing. So here is our breakfast for dinner. We've got sausages, bacon, eggs. We've got the award winning black pudding that I just spoke about. Beans, toast. Um, everyone's got it in varying degrees. And yeah, this is what we're gonna have, a nice breakfast for dinner. Some of us don't have eggs. And yeah, we're just gonna go and sit down and this is a proper, like, I don't know, Sunday night dinner, not a roast. But we'll have a breakfast for a change. So for tonight's dinner, I have made a favorite in this house, which is chicken and broccoli stew. So I literally use a whole kilo of frozen broccoli. There's carrot in here, there's chopped potato, onion, I've got some shredded chicken from a whole chicken that I cooked um, and then there's some stock and I always add some dried stuffing mix as well just to thicken it and give it that sage and onion flavour. One of our absolute favourites, we have it all the time. Um, and yeah, we're just going to serve this with some of the cheese topped bread from Sainsbury's which is like the best bread in my opinion. But yeah, this is like packed full of proper cold fighting ingredients, <laughs> I don't know what I was trying to say then. Proper winter warmer. It might not look appetising, but it's really, really good. And here we are served up with um, the cheesy bread. It's like cheese topped, one of my favourites. With the cheese gone. And one of the most old fashioned looking plates known to man. <laughs> this is actually given to us by our neighbours. Don't know why we keep them, but it's handy to have plastic plates sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, this is what we're having tonight. So I'm just making a shepherd's pie. Actually, it's not a shepherd's pie, and I don't think it's a cottage pie. I'm using pork mince, so I'm not quite sure what that class is as. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I've done my mince, I'll show you in a minute, but I'm going to use my new pressure cooker to do my potatoes. I absolutely love this thing. This morning, I've already done all this rice, so we've got a massive thing there, and then I wanted to weigh it out how much like each portion was, so we've got some there. Um, and yeah, I just love it. Like the rice, I just this time I didn't use the rice function, I just put it on for three minutes and then let the pressure release naturally, I think that is, yeah. And it's come out perfectly, like I've got a whole thing of fluffy rice. If you can see any blue on mitts because we're decorating at the moment. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna put my potatoes in and these take eight minutes, so I'm just gonna, someone gave me the tip to pour boiling water on them and then it will come up to pressure quicker. So I'm gonna just cover these with boiling water, a teaspoon of salt and then they take eight minutes and they're so good. They come out really, really soft, like you hardly have to mash them at all. Something to do with like the fact that the steam's like forced into them. I don't know. Don't know the technical jargon. <laughs> this is my mince for my shepherd's pie is what we're calling it. So I've got two lots of pork mince in here. I've used some stock cubes. I've put some Italian herbs, some garlic and red onion, a white onion. I've also put some gravy. I think it's turkey gravy just to thicken it up a bit. There's some peas in there. And I've added a little splash of red wine vinegar because I haven't got any Worcestershire sauce or anything like that, or any balsamic. So I put a little bit of red wine vinegar because it needed something, like a little bit of acidity. And it's actually come out really, really good. I've put loads and loads of black pepper as well. I might put a pinch of cayenne pepper, not so much that you can taste it like hot, but it just gives that little, like tiny little bit of a spark. So I'm gonna save some of this to have with the rice for my son that doesn't like the mash. Pop my mash on. And yeah, I'm feeling really ahead of the game today. It's really good because I can just put my potatoes in and walk off and leave them rather than having to stand there. Still loving this and still enjoying all your tips. Everyone's telling me on how to use them. So here is the shepherd's pie out of the oven. I just topped it with some cheese and let it go all nice and crispy. And then I just served it with some honey glazed carrots that I did in the oven. And we all had it in varying different degrees. One of my son had rice because he doesn't like mash and I bought these two really really nice bowls in home sense and I really wish I'd bought five at the time because I hate the fact that they're mismatched but I went back and as always with home sense you can never get the same thing again so you always have to pick it up at the time but yeah this was really really good and we had loads of leftovers. 
so that is it for this video if you are interested in winning the Xori 5.7 litre 9 in 1 pressure cooker that is a mouthful all you need to do is make sure you've seen that video then come back here tell us your favourite feature about the pressure cooker and why you would like to win one subscribe to my channel and like this video and then you'll be in with a chance to win open to the UK only because sorry I'm happy to post it out but it has to be within the UK so in a few days time I will go in I will filter the comments to the comment that got the most likes and that one will win I will then contact that person via the comment and get their details send those to Kasori and they'll post the pressure cooker out to you I'll also announce the winner in next Tuesday's video and I'll pop it up on a community tab as well just so you know so make sure you keep an eye on your comments and switch on notifications so that you can be notified if I reply to your comment I'll leave all the details of how you enter in the description box as well just below this video but basically leave a comment saying why you like the pressure cooker why you'd like to win it the one with the most likes will win and we'll be in touch and I'll be back really really soon with another video good luck if you enter and take care guys did you make it? Did you break free? Did you manage to be who you wanna be? Maybe somewhere you think about me too